Today I fucked up by learning that my toddler made up their own way of swearing at me and has been telling me to f off for a while. So the build up to this fuck up. I work out at home and have done since my child was born. I like to work out to music and there is one particular song that for some reason really helps me get in the mood to squat. It's a song that I played for some time without question until 4 months ago because it has a few swear words in it. My child had been listening to the song a lot more because they recently got into dancing to my music. I realized this when they repeated some of the lyrics and I explained to them why sometimes there are words that we don't use and why act. My child is very emotionally in tune and can express themselves very well. So after this conversation they were very alert to any naughty words, so if they hear anyone swear now they will tell them it's not okay. Let's fast forward to a few weeks ago, my child is now having a lot of big feelings that are resulting in big tantrums. Tantrums where they start lifting their fingers up and crossing them over into the shape of an X, and then saying off mummy, off while moving this little X made of fingers in my direction. That confused me for a bit I must admit. Then came the realization. We were sat down eating dinner and I said the dreaded word that every toddler hates. No, that one word started something that let me know how intelligent my toddler really is. My toddler lifted their fingers, crossed them over, stared at me and said X off mummy. I sat there for a minute while it dawned on me. I composed myself, and then I asked if X meant something else. My toddler silently nodded while staring at me. I asked what it meant and I was met with I can't tell you, it's a naughty word mummy. This was all the confirmation that I needed but I knew I still had to continue to address this issue. I asked if X was the same word from the song. My toddler broke out laughing, smiled at me and said yes mummy. They had been telling me to fuck off in their own very unique way during tantrums for a few weeks now, and I didn't have any idea until it dawned on me that X had another meaning. Too long didn't read, Toddler repeated a swear word, and got told not to use swear words. Toddler then created their own swear word in response and had been swearing at me for a few weeks. My niece used to scream cock at to everyone that made her angry ha ha. WTX Lmxow. Kind of similar situation, daughter is starting to repeat words, so we starting replacing words with not bad words, i.e. shoot, frick, crud. Unfortunately she already knows what the real words are and she will helpfully correct us lol. I started using biscuits in place of bitches but then it evolved to me using it in place of most swear words so now at work I'll just be like or biscuits and it could mean anything from more shit to or fuck. I used biscuits in place of shit while chatting with my friend because her 6 year old was hanging around us and the kid just perked up looked me dead on and began to interrogate me on why I was suddenly talking about biscuits. It was because she knew I was covering up a swear word. She just wanted to know which one it was. Mom is going to have to work at staying a step ahead of that one. Once my then 2 to 3 year old yelled at me you are a toy! Exclamation mark at the top of his lungs. He'd been watching Toy Story and to him, that was the worst insult ever. I had to turn around so he wouldn't see me laugh! Exclamation mark. Edit, holy cow this blew up while I was putting that same child to bed. However, he's now 11 and talks my ears off about Fortnite and Pokemon and Roblox. Tikshu, smiley face. Today I fucked up, dismissing bright red blood in my stool for years. If you're currently experiencing this symptom please read. I experience, I've had small amounts of bright red blood on my stool for years. I had always dismissed this finding because I'm young with a horrible diet. I have always been taught that black stool is the worrisome stool, as that's indicative of upper gastrointestinal bleeding, whereas stool that has bright blood just indicates hemorrhoids. My logic for dismissing the bright blood on my stool, backslash I've had a diet consisting of high sugar plus high fat, processed foods with low fiber in addition to being very inactive causing constipation and straining, so, bleeding from straining just made sense. I'm 6 apostrophe 1 at 225. Backslash blood was not consistent it came and went. Backslash there was not a lot of blood, and when there was it looked like skid marks on the stool, something I thought was obviously related to hemorrhoids. Backslash I'm young, 29. Backslash family history of hemorrhoids. 
so I thought me having hemorrhoids was just part of the family business. Backslash lack of education, especially knowledge relating to polyps, an abnormal tissue formation resembling a skin tag in the colon. Why I eventually met with a GI specialist. The blood in my stool became more of an everyday thing that lasted for a month. From my perspective, that frequency was abnormal. My GI doctor thought it was more than likely hemorrhoids, but still recommended a colonoscopy because no matter what, blood in stool, especially in young adults, is not normal should always be inspected. What was found from the colonoscopy? 20 mm polyp. To put in perspective, a 10 mm polyp is considered big. The polyp was sent to pathology and in a few days I received a call. Pathology, they discovered that cancer had formed on the polyp. It's more of a rare cancer, 1% of colon cancers, that is unfortunately a bit more aggressive than the average colon cancer. At this point, I'm had been staged at stage 3A. After getting part of my colon, large intestine, removed and 6 weeks later, I will now be starting chemotherapy in 5 days. The doctors do feel I have an 80 to 90% chance of being cured with chemo's assistance. But what's more interesting about this cancer is that it is most common in younger people, around later 20s 30s. Doctors mentioned that they are seeing colon cancer arise more often in young people. Too long didn't read, if you have blood in your stool, you more than likely do not have colon cancer. But you should get yourself checked by a doctor if you are having this symptom just to make sure there is nothing going on. I did some clarifications. Cancer formed on a polyp relating to the length of time it had not been addressed. I now have no blood in my stool after the polyp was removed. The type of cancer I have is adenocarcinoma with signet ring cells. I've decided to document myself as I progress through chemotherapy for myself, but also to help increase awareness. Link to my first video basically restating everything I've stated here. I will additionally answer questions in a video response format to help save time, as it might be more bearable to respond in that manner than time during chemo. Well shit I gotta talk to a doctor. Just be sure to push back if you're young and they dismiss you. That was my experience. A lot of similar symptoms as op and my PCP was very quick to tell me it was probably nothing, I'm too young for a colonoscopy, try this topical medicine, etc. I pushed for a more thorough exam slash eventual colonoscopy, and sure enough, they found a polyp that the GI called a ticking time bomb. Had I listened to that PCP, it might have been a very different outcome. Guys, it should go without saying but still, do not take action or refrain from taking action based on medical advice you read on social media. See a doctor. Um unexpectedly great advice. I tried to put my story up in life pro tips, but they don't allow medical stuff. I feel that it's crucial for everyone to get this information because I know I'm not the only person that had this mindset. Thank you for your response. Going to the docks. I've had blood in my stool and sometimes dark stools for a while now. Assumed the darkness was linked with drinking red wine and the blood hemorrhoids but now I'm wondering. Good luck with your journey and thank you. Went through nearly the exact same situation as you man. I did the same and ignored the blood, chalked it up to this or that, out of sight out of mind. My colon was nearly completely blocked by the time the tumor was identified. I was 27 at the time and the last thing any doctor thought it would be was colon cancer. It's a big eye opener to your health and how quickly things can escalate. It sounds cliche but it's so easy to have a that'll never happen to me mentality when it comes to our health. Ditto. Ignored for a long time, finally did seek out a GI specialist who gave me antibiotics and said I'd be fine. After I landed in the hospital for the pain, scans returned negative so they scheduled me for a colonoscopy, which had to be abandoned part way through because they couldn't fit the scope past the mass of cancer that was so large that it no longer fit inside my colon, about the size of a regulation softball. The rupture of the colon was what was causing the pain. Found at 30 years old. Chemo sucks. They say I'm going to be fine now though. 
Today I fucked up by going to the ER for a bump on my body, turned out it was my clitoris. I saw other people on this community share stories from the past and I think this is one of the most face poor moments of my life. A definite testimony to how the education system failed me. This was from 4 years ago when I was 18 years old, yes. 18. I was taking a shower and paying attention to my body parts when I found that there was a little bump on my vulva that hurt and that every time I touched it, it gave me goosebumps all over my body. I was so scared and researched on it, and as expected, I got even more anxious as I thought I had cancer, an infection, some STD, or whatever. After that shower I kept touching the bump and I was so convinced that it was serious so I told my mom to book an obgyne appointment for me right away. At that time, the Obgyne's next open schedule was on the following week and I thought it was urgent so my mom advised me to go to the emergency room instead. When I arrived at the ER, there were three nurses receiving people and I described it to them, they brought me to a room to have it checked and the available doctor said there's nothing that looks physically wrong here. And I said, don't you see the abnormal bump in the middle? And the nurse said sweetie, that's your clitoris. I was so red and embarrassed, I only figured out where my clitoris was when I was 18, woozy face, too long didn't read, when I was 18 I felt a bump in my vulva that gave me goosebumps and a little pain when I touched it, so I was advised by my parents to go to the ER. When the nurse examined me, she told me it was just my clitoris lol. Doc I have these weird lumps hanging below my penis. Sweetie those are just your balls. At least it seems that the nurse was cool about it. Probably would have way worse when she would have been an asshole. They probably were just glad that it wasn't an emergency. Yeah right, they still charged $300. That's just your clit. They'll be $4,200. Hash next. I had a girl arrive by ambulance because I was short of breath and my heart was racing and I couldn't see straight. The story was she was home alone with her boyfriend, and it just happened so she made him call 911. Everyone assumed drugs, turns out after some prodding it was just her first orgasm and she thought she knew what an orgasm was until that night. That guy put a woman in the hospital with an orgasm mal. Well this has reinforced that my daughter's going to have those all about your body books. But I'm glad my kids are relaxed enough to ask me questions, also still young enough to not be embarrassed yet. That's a really nice thing to do as a dad. When I received my first unsolicited dick pic, from a guy twice my age, and was a bit confused, I wanted to talk to my dad about it, but he kept changing the topic, woozy face, 